What's up guys today's video I am gonna do a detailed review and pick the top 5 best laptops for coding 2022. After doing proper researches, we came to the conclusion that meets the best in terms of overall. Kindly leave a like if you find this helpful, and I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications if you haven't. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use to for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. We'll be back with more videos, so let's get started. The ThinkPad X1 Carbon, Gen 9, has the classic raven black, rectangular ThinkPad aesthetic we come to expect from Lenovo over the years. The lightweight chassis is made from a combination of magnesium and carbon fiber, with a nice, soft touch feel on the palm rest. There's an optional carbon fiber with lid that gives the laptop an added touch of class and a softer texture, but it only comes on configurations that have a 3840 by 2400 display. There are a few subtle, but important, design changes from the Gen 8 version of the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. The chassis is a little bit longer and narrower, 12.38 by 8.72 inches versus 12.7 by 8.5 inches, in order to accommodate a 16-10 aspect ratio screen as opposed to the 16 to 9 panels carbons have used previously. This allows for more vertical screen real estate you can use for reading web pages or editing documents. The dual hinges from Gen 8 have been replaced by one long, round hinge that takes up most of the width of the lid. And, in a welcome change, the power button now sits above the right side of the keyboard, where we would expect it. Though most laptops have their power buttons above the keyboard, Lenovo had placed the 8x1 Carbon, Gen 8S button on the side so that users could easily turn it on even if the lid was closed and it was connected to a docking station. However, the button was small, skimpy and awkward in that location. At 12.38 by 8.72 by 0.59 inches and 2.5 pounds, the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, Gen 9, is extremely thin and light for any laptop. The Surface Laptop line started with a dedication to Microsoft's Alcantara fabric, the 15-inch model is only available with a new aluminum finish, in your choice of silver or black colors. It's a great look and feel for the product, but we do miss the unique feeling of that fabric keyboard deck. Ultimately, though, it's probably for the best, as fabric simply doesn't have the same lasting power as metal. The laptop feels very light for its size, weighing just 3.4 pounds, 1.54 kilograms, and measuring 13.4 by 9.6 x.57 inches, 339.5 by 224 by 14.69 millimeters. That means it's both half a pound lighter and a hair thinner compared to the 15-inch MacBook Pro. That's no small feat for a freshman laptop maker in comparison. However, it's rather clear how and why this laptop is thinner and lighter than its main alternatives, it has fewer pieces of dedicated hardware and features, like its lack of dedicated graphics and only two ports compared to the MacBook Pro's discrete GPU and four Thunderbolt 3 ports. Honestly, we're confused as to why Microsoft didn't take fuller advantage of the new 15-inch form factor, though we can't say we're surprised. After all, the 15-inch Surface Book 2 suffers a similar fate. There's just so much wasted room about the 15-inch Surface Laptop 3 that it's frankly indefensible. We could list a host of features that could have been added to such a laptop of this size, more ports, top firing speakers, an SD card reader, a larger trackpad and thinner display bezels cover more than a few. That said, we do rather like the keyboard and trackpad the way they are on the Surface Laptop 4. The trackpad is incredibly smooth to the touch and accurate, while the keys offer plenty of travel and are quite quiet. Though, we'd like somewhat stronger feedback from the keys. We do appreciate the Surface Laptop 4 touch display. The screen retains Microsoft's signature 3 to 2 aspect ratio, and the 2496 by 1664 resolution is sharp enough for all sorts of use cases. This makes the display perfect for both text-based work and content consumption as well as digital media creation and viewing, if you're okay with some extra-large black bars. Even though the LG Kilogram might be a more literally accurate name for this laptop, the LG Gram 17, 2022, is shockingly light regardless. It's arguably the very first thing you'll notice about the laptop when first picking it up out of the box. It's hard to truly gauge the value of this without holding the laptop yourself, but trust us when we say its light weight of just 2.98 pounds, 1.35 kilograms, is a remarkable achievement for a 17-inch laptop. That weight positions the LG Gram 17, 2021, as one of the lightest 17-inch laptops around. 
other productivity-based laptops certainly don't fare as well in this regard. The Gigabyte Aero 17, for example, weighs almost twice as much at 5.5 pounds, 2.49 kilograms, while the XMG Pro 17 fares a bit better at 5.1 pounds, 2.3 kilograms. That's still roughly a whole kilogram the LG Gram 17, 2021, has over its competition, then. Still, if you want to go even lighter, the LG Gram 14 and 16 inch variants weigh even less and are slightly cheaper to boot. Those could be better options if you're concerned about the extra real estate taken up by the LG Gram 17, 2021. Speaking of real estate, the LG Gram 17, 2021 S dimensions are 15 by 10.3 by 0.7 inches, 381 by 261 by 17.78 millimeters. While the larger screen does take away from some of the portability aspect of its 14 and 16 inch counterparts, the impressively thin depth makes it compact enough to fit into an appropriately sized laptop bag with no issue. You might think that such a lightweight design comes at the cost of durability. After all, heftier laptops can give users peace of mind when it comes to preventing accidental damages. The LG Gram 17, 2021, is still impressively sturdy, however, featuring a full metal body that's resistant to drops, dust and other common forms of wear and tear. This probably isn't super surprising, but the Dell XPS 17 is a gorgeous laptop. All silver with a Dell logo on the back of the screen, it looks like the MacBook Pro competitor that it is. And, unlike the MacBook, it has this soft finish on the deck of the laptop that makes the laptop much more comfortable to work on. The 17-inch size of course also allows for the XPS 17 to have much more space on the keyboard deck, and it's kind of surprising how Dell put it to use here. Instead of putting a full keyboard with a numpad, like many laptops in this size class, Dell instead puts a standard laptop keyboard in and surrounds it with speakers instead. That means that the Dell XPS 17 has a very similar design to the MacBook Pro in this regard, and we absolutely love it. There are absolutely folks that are going to want a full keyboard, but the speakers that Dell was able to put in here sound fantastic. Because the Dell XPS 17 is packed with an 11th generation Intel Core processor and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060, it probably shouldn't be super surprising that it absolutely chews through most workloads. The dedicated GPU here makes it able to hold its own in games, easily averaging around 52 FPS in Metro Exodus at 1080p with everything at Ultra. Turn down a few settings, and you're going to be able to get a solid 60 FPS experience out of even the most demanding games at 1080p. But that's not really what the Dell XPS 17 is for. The MacBook Air's performance powered by the M1 processor and 16GB of RAM is phenomenal. When I split its screen between 20 Chrome, Intel, not Universal, tabs and a 1080p YouTube video plus Apple's Mail and Photos app, Pixelmator, again, an Intel app, and 1Password, Intel, again, in the background, I never saw anything close to a hiccup. Oh, and in the background, 20GB of 4K video was being airdrop transferred, while everything stayed smooth and stable. During a group call, I even found time to play around with iOS apps, downloading and opening the Overcast Podcatcher, HBO Max and the game Among Us. All while a 4K YouTube video of a chef cooking played on my laptop monitor, I played around in each of those apps, so I could start an Adventure Time episode, download a podcast and drag my Lil Among Us guy around on screen. Yes, I'm very good at multitasking. Most of the time, the MacBook Air with M1 felt performance-wise like it was identical, if not faster, than the 2020 Core i5 MacBook Pro I've used to test Big Sur, or the 2017 Core i7 MacBook Pro work computer I replied upon. This includes when I connected an external monitor. Before this, I was a bit skeptical, even with Apple's boasts of 3.5x improved performance versus the Intel MacBook Air released earlier this year, because I've always pushed my MacBooks to the limit, and needed a MacBook Pro, and not an Air, to do my work. This MacBook Air? It feels like a Pro. And let's see how that shakes out in benchmarks and I'll note that not all of our tests were done with universal versions of apps, and Intel versions aren't optimized for the M1. The Air scored 5,962 on the Geekbench 5.1, Intel, multi-core test, which was practically in a dead heat with the 5,925 from the M1 MacBook Pro. The Air soundly beat the 5,084 from the ZenBook 13 and the 5,319 from the XPS 13, 
both tested with the Intel Core i7-11650G7 CPU and 16GB of RAM, on the comparable Geekbench 5.2 test. The old Intel MacBook Air Y-Series Intel CPU mustered only 2738.